Good morning, everybody. If in fact you are living in a time zone where it is in fact morning, if it is not good, whatever it is that you're enjoying. Thank you for being here. I'm really excited. Um, we don't have tons and tons of time, so I want to jump right into it. Um, first, hello, my name is Thorne Mooney. I am a witch. I am a coven leader. I am a high priestess of a Wiccan coven in an initiatory tradition of Wicca. Um, I am the author of Traditional Wicca, A Seeker's Guide, which came out in 2018. And my upcoming book, which I'm very excited about, is The Witch's Path, Advancing Your Craft at Every Level. And I'm excited about it because it's not tradition specific, and it's also not level specific. It's designed for anybody who's interested in witchcraft, but is feeling kind of stuck about where to go next. That means if you're a beginner and you're kind of feeling overwhelmed, there's so much stuff out there, how do I actually get to practicing? Or if you're a little bit of an armchair witch and maybe you have a lot of book knowledge, but you're not sure how to put it into place. Um, and then I was also writing for folks like me who are dealing with community leadership and coven leadership and just really feeling drained and burned out, which on the heels of a global pandemic, I feel like maybe we could all use a little bit of. Um, so that comes out in September, um, I think, the Llewellyn folks who are running the show here will share some links with you shortly, but that is who I am. Welcome. Um, so launching into it, I wrote the book about plateaus and it's because I was on a plateau. Um, I imagine that probably everybody watching right now has been on a plateau before too, whether it happened early on, maybe you're on one right now, maybe you're feeling burned out. Um, so what I would like to ask real quick, um, because I'm formerly a classroom teacher. You'll be able to tell real quick that I've spent a lot of time working with kids. So it works. Don't feel insulted. I know y'all are adults. But if you have pen and paper or your phone and you want to use your notes app or something, okay, I want to ask you to take it out real quick. I'm going to ask you to do something. Um, so what I'd like you to do is I want you to close your, close your eyes for a second. And I want you to take just a few seconds to imagine your ideal practice, whether you're a witch or some other type of magician. I want you to think about what your life looks like. And I want you to be as specific as possible. Um, you might visualize a magical room that you work in or some other kind of sacred space. You could imagine what, you're, what you look like, what you're wearing, what you do every morning, what your routine looks like. Imagine your ideal and really let it really let it roll like use your imagination if you can smell things if you can hear things what does your perfect witchcraft practice your perfect magical life look like i'm setting a timer here spend a few seconds and then what i want you to do once you have that image in your head i've got a timer here for 1 minute i want you to write down as many of those details as possible doesn't have to be complete sentences Whatever words come to mind, get it down on paper. Go. I'm going to sit here and sip my water while you do that. You're also welcome to share your vision in the chat if you want. Do you have lots of books around you? Maybe you have a supportive coven behind you. Let your mind kind of kind of roam here. There's no limits. What sort of tools do you have? How do you feel? Just take a few more seconds, say like 15 more seconds. Maybe you imagine yourself having a particular role in your community. Maybe you aspire to be a teacher. For folks who just came in, I'm asking you to think about your ideal practice. 
What does your life look like when you fantasize about your perfect magical life? In as much detail as possible. Where are you? Do you live in a particular place? What sorts of things do you have? What do you do? How do you think? How do you feel? Good. Okay. So folks are sharing in the chat. I see daily meditation, private study with lots of books. If you follow me on Instagram at Thorn the Witch, you see I just posted, I'm a big book person. I got a big library. That was part of my ideal. Um, yeah. Room for a coven to come circle in your space. Mm -hmm. A stable altar setup, maybe something that you don't have to take down when people come over. Yeah, something peaceful, something that is fulfilling. Good. Okay, so I want you to hold on to that image and hold on to those notes for a second. We're going to come back to that. Jack Chanick says, no roommates, so I can circle comfortably at home. That was an ideal for me, too. Absolutely. Um, yeah, Emmy says that they want to be kind of the good neighbor who's able to support other people who needs who need help. Having lots of plants in your life. Yeah. Oh man, so Lauren says daily meditation, daily daily connection. Um I want to we're going to come back to that idea about daily practice too. Okay, good. Yeah. So everybody has an ideal in their head. It might move from day to day, it depends on how you feel, but we have kind of visions of what we think our lives should look like. And on the one hand, that's great, okay? It's in order to be able to achieve something, you kind of have to be able to imagine it first, right? That's sort of a basic principle, not just in magic, but in life as a whole. Like if you know where you're going, it's easier to get there. Um, but sometimes those images can also be difficult because what we end up doing is we create some kind of ideal that sometimes isn't particularly achievable. And that can be discouraging, especially if you already struggle like I do with things like depression or chronic anxiety, right? Folks have families and if you work a if you work a job or sometimes multiple jobs, like there's lots of stuff to worry about. So sometimes those fantasies can be not super duper helpful. Um, but we're gonna talk about how to use those fantasies in a productive way. So we'll come back to that. So before we before we do, I wanna say that everybody gets stuck. I think one of the reasons why it's so difficult to talk about things like burnout and getting in a rut or just being overwhelmed and confused um, is we have these images of what other people are doing. We don't measure up and then it becomes kind of shameful to talk about them, right? It's embarrassing if you've ever been to like a public event or you've been hanging out in a Facebook group or something interacting with a lot of people. Um, for me, I do this on Instagram, right? Like you see everybody's beautiful posts and I think, man, like, I didn't even know it was a it was an eclipse last night, or I didn't do anything for the summer solstice. Um, and you beat yourself up, right? Um, that's something that everybody goes through. And as somebody who lives on the internet, folks who have followed me for a long time know that I started out on YouTube like 12 years ago. So I've been living on the internet for a long time, everybody. <laughs> and I can tell you that the images that folks put online are cultivated and they're framed in particular ways for all kinds of reasons, right? Like it's helpful to put, we think we want to put our best foot forward, but sometimes um, it inadvertently encourages us to hide some of the things that maybe we're less thrilled about or less proud about, like falling behind, um, feeling burned out. Nobody likes to admit that maybe they're not feeling the magic that, that they used to. Um, so it's super duper normal. I want to start there. So now I want you to take that vision that you created for yourself. If you've got notes in front of you or you just have that image in your head and I want to spend just, just a few less time here, maybe just like 30 seconds. And I want you to ask yourself, what is getting in the way as specifically as possible? What is getting in the way? of that vision and you can be take it wherever you need to here if it's an issue of like not being able to um 
maybe you can't get out of bed some days, right? Maybe your boss is making you nuts and you just can't can't deal sometimes. Maybe you've got too many kids in your face, right? Or maybe you can't afford things. Like, what is it that's getting in the way? And I want you to be as specific as possible. That's really key. Uh, so for me, um, I'll share some personal stories kind of along the way. Um, I'm, before I do that, I'm actually going to not talk over your thinking and give you just 20 seconds. What's getting in the way? Maybe it's your physical health, okay? Which Jericho Simon is, is telling us is an issue for them. Um, for me, it was clinical depression um, and school and work. Living in a small town, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes neighbors are not awesome. Sometimes the political climate of where you live might be not ideal. Um, you might be, you might have a lot of discordance with the folks who live around you. Mm -hmm. Lack of time, folks are saying. Not having space. Balancing relationships and balancing work. That's really difficult for me too. I think a lot of folks, there are some authors out there um, who this is what they do. Uh, but for me, um, I actually work in publishing for another publisher. So I've got a 40 hour a week job, sometimes a little bit more. This headset is actually courtesy of my day job. So I get it. Laziness, Stacy says. Yeah, I mean, sometimes, let's be real. Sometimes the issue really is us. I've totally been there. Some days I get home and I just don't wanna. Yeah. Okay. So now that you've done that, I want to propose something to you. Okay. One of the reasons why plateaus happen, why ruts happen, why we get into this cyclical space of, I should be doing something. Here's this thing I should be doing. Oh, I didn't do it. I'm a bad witch. I'm not a dedicated magical practitioner, right? I'm going to set these lofty goals oh, here comes the thing, I didn't do it, I'm bad, right? Do you do this? Do you this? I do this. I think we all do this. Um, one of the reasons why that happens is because we treat witchcraft, and I'm, I'm speaking about witchcraft, but we can really think broadly. We treat our individual, our traditions, our practices, our movement um, as though it's a monolithic thing, it's one thing. Okay, um, witchcraft is a good example. So what specifically is witchcraft? What activities, what beliefs, what actions are witchcraft? And if you really stop and think about it, it's not a single thing, right? Witchcraft is made up of multiple things, multiple ideas, multiple practices. So I wanna propose something to you. One of the reasons why overwhelm happens and why ruts and plateaus happen is because we tend to think of it as one thing. I'm a good witch, I'm a bad witch, I'm good at witchcraft, I'm talented at witchcraft. Witchcraft is a struggle for me. These are phrases that we use. I'm gonna suggest that we stop thinking of it as one thing. And instead, in that exercise that you just did, I asked you to be specific. You're not stuck as a witch. You're not bad at witchcraft. Maybe what's really happening is you're struggling with meditation. Maybe you're not so great at a daily practice. Maybe you have a hard time connecting in specific kinds of ritual. Maybe you don't like drum circles, right? Um, Try to be specific about where the struggle actually is. I'm gonna give you an example. So you know how every single book, right? And books I love. Um, I came up in the 90s reading a lot of books. Um, practically every book out there will tell you that you must have a meditation practice. And when they say meditation, they practically always mean sitting meditation. This has changed recently. A lot of the new materials that are coming out now provide insight into other ways to kind of achieve the same things that meditation does. But when I was coming up in the 90s and into the early 2000s, they didn't say that. It was very much like, here's the posture your body should hold. Here is what you should do with your hands. Close your eyes, right? Imagine a blank slate or something. Clear your mind. Well, 
if you struggle with, let's say, ADHD, if you have aphantasia, if there are things cognitively about you that make that difficult, um, for me, I'm just really fidgety. And for years, I really struggled with that. And I took that to mean that I was just not very magical. I was just bad at things. Um, and it took a long time for me to realize that there were alternatives to that. Yes, Desiree, anxiety. I have been on anxiety meds since college. It's really beneficial, um, but it does mean that some things are more difficult for me with the particular cognitive functions that I have than other folks. Um, so does that mean that I can't practice as a witch if I can't manage sitting meditation? I hope you all said, no, of course not, that's ridiculous. But guess what, that's true for other things too. When you find yourself in a position where things are a struggle, sometimes, sometimes you know in your heart that I'm really just not trying, right? Like Stacy talked about laziness, I've been there too. Okay, there are some things that I'd like for a long time, I was just not very good with tarot and I thought that I couldn't work with tarot. And it was years before I really was like, well, Thorne, you haven't actually committed to practicing tarot and studying tarot. So like you thought you were gonna just walk in and be good at it, right? Okay, so sometimes it is us, but a lot of the times it's that not all aspects of witchcraft are equally for all people. Sometimes it's a question of, finding alternatives, okay? And that goes for our perspectives too, right? Um, something that I have struggled with in the past is feeling like I don't belong in wider witchcraft communities because I don't always share the same kinds of beliefs. I'll give you another kind of benign example. I'm not really into astrology. I don't disbelieve in astrology. It's just not something I really think about a whole lot. It's not something that I've spent a lot of time studying, and it's not something that really is important in my practice. And that kind of scandalizes other witches sometimes, right? Well, what's your what's your rising sign, blah, blah, blah. And I don't, I don't always know that stuff. And even if I do know the stuff, I don't necessarily know what it means, okay? Um, so that used to make me kind of feel bad, like maybe I didn't belong. And it took years of being out in the community to realize that lots of folks have different perspectives and that's okay. Um, the fear of not fitting in, as Tanya is telling us, that's, that's sometimes what gets in the way. And sometimes that's all it is. It's a fear of not fitting in. You are going to be good at some things and you're going to be less good at other things. Some things will be challenging. Um, and that's just, that's just true. Um, and I think sometimes it's a question of reframing that for ourselves so that it isn't discouraging. Sometimes you have to find the thing that fuels you and that feeds you. So I want to use a practical example now, just because this is the thing that folks always, always bring up that notion of the daily practice. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna be controversial here for a second. You don't necessarily need a daily practice the way folks talk about what a daily practice should look like. What you should have, the thing that will help, that will propel you forward, is not necessarily a daily practice, but a regular practice. Something that you are doing continuously in a measured, conscious way. And if you can't manage daily, and there are all kinds of reasons I don't manage daily, okay? Um, what matters is what can you do? Um, I like to use fitness analogies just because I've always done like really weird sports. I've never been like, you know, I can't manage like a team sport, but I've always done like roller derby or HEMA or something like that. I'm like into alternative sports, okay? Um, so I think about folks, you know, January rolls around and they're lots of people are like, oh, I'm going to go to a gym, okay? And they they sign up for a gym and they tell themselves, I see this every year, everybody. Um, they tell themselves, okay, I'm going to go to the gym five times a week. Well, if you're unaccustomed to going to a gym, I got news for you. You're not going five times a week. 
Um, you just aren't, okay? Either because it's difficult to establish a new pattern that is so extremely difficult. If you go from never going to a gym ever to going five times a week, burnout is imminent. There are exceptions, okay? I'm not the boss of you, maybe you're the exception, but the majority of people, that might last a week, and then it's back to never going to a gym ever. And wouldn't it be more reasonable to instead say, I'm gonna go once, or I'm gonna go twice for a few weeks, and then I'm gonna amp it up. Well, witchcraft works the same way. Practice works the same way. If you are new to the craft, there's a lot of literature out there that tells you, okay, you gotta meditate, you gotta learn about pantheons, you gotta look for a coven, you gotta get all your tools, right? Like there's this big litany of things. And we say, oh, those are just suggestions. But when they're coming from everybody all at once, of course newcomers feel like they're obligated to do those things, um, but you don't. So when you are struggling with that daily practice, okay, choose one thing. Okay, if you're new to meditation, if that is something you want to explore, don't start with the 20 minutes. Don't start with a half hour. Can you do five minutes? Can you do one minute? Choose something that is manageable and set yourself up for success from the beginning. When that becomes easy, you add more. It sounds goofy, like I'm using I'm using gym and fitness analogies, but this is true in magic. This is true regardless if you're if you're Wiccan, if you're some other type of witch, if you're interested in ceremonial traditions, whatever it is, if you are introducing a new routine, give yourself the grace of doing one thing at a time. Play into your strengths. Um, I think it was Deborah who just shared that. Yes, it is more than acceptable, encouraged. Please do play into your strengths. If you find that something is difficult or challenging, that doesn't mean don't do it. It just means approach it with that beginner's mind. Start something in small steps and be okay with however long it takes you to get there. You've got your whole life. Sometimes, too, the problem is how we're measuring ourselves. Just like what I said in the beginning, if we're busy comparing ourselves to other people, everybody in this room right now has different needs. You have different experiences. You have different cognitive needs. You have different bodies. You have different home lives. It is okay. In fact, it is necessary for you to figure out what your witchcraft is going to look like in your circumstances. And it's not going to look like mine. It's not going to look like Deborah's or Barbara's or Morgan's or Tempest or anybody else who's here. Okay. Um, we only have a few minutes. I want to pause for a second. Um, I'm going to leave you with some more pragmatic tips. If, if this is resonating, um, this is what the new book is full of. Um, it's not tradition specific. As you can see, we haven't talked about, you know, the type of which I am doesn't matter. The type of, the type of practitioner you are doesn't matter. Um, these are approaches that are available to anybody, regardless of what your goals are. Um, I'm going to take a second. If you have questions, if you have thoughts, if you have specific circumstances you'd like me to touch on, please put them in the chat. Uh, there is a little bit of a delay with the chat. So while you all are doing that, I just want to share a couple of tips for some of my community leaders and coven leaders who I know are here. Um, I want to leave you with something that was life changing for me. Um, so some of you folks know, if you followed me, I run a Gardnerian tradition, um, which is an initiatory tradition of Wicca. And in Gardnerian Wicca, covens are led by usually some kind of high priestess or high priest. There is usually, there's a hierarchy in place. So I'm responsible for that coven. And after years of that, I found myself really getting burned out because you got to remember it's not just, people don't realize this if you're running like a coven, but also an event, a pagan pride day, a festival. There's so much that happens behind the scenes. People might show up for ritual or for workshops, but 
Somebody had to clean the house and figure out the food. Somebody had to figure out the sleeping arrangements. Somebody had to figure out the technology. Somebody had to approach the speakers. Somebody had to negotiate with the local police in the park about Pagan Pride Day, whatever. Like there's so much behind the scenes that folks don't realize. And that's why burnout happens for community leaders and events tend to be, groups and events tend to be short lived because there's so much work. So, I had a very dear priestess friend tell me, um, and I share this in the book in detail, um, when I was struggling, she told me, here's what you're going to do. You're going to make yourself a job description. Just like you would in a regular job. When you go for pretty much any other type of job, they'll tell you what does your job entail right? You can do that as a coven leader. What are your hours? Are you, are you on call? Are you available? What are other people's responsibilities? And so for me, I did this for myself as an exercise. I'm a coven leader, so it's my job to make sure that rituals are ready to go. It's my job to make sure that I'm facilitating folks' magical experiences, etc. What's not on my job description? Being a therapist, being a parent, being a maid, right? Cleaning up after people. Those are things that are not on my job description. If you struggle with setting boundaries, whether you're a coven leader or you're an event organizer, having that description in your back pocket is great. And if you're part of an organization, encourage everybody, do this as a group activity, have everybody write their own job descriptions and then negotiate what goes where. That way, when it seems like somebody is crossing a boundary, you can go, oh, actually, that's this person this is the person you need to talk to. It's a little thing, but it's something that can be totally life-changing. Okay, back over here in the chat. Yes, those boundaries are so important. All right. Holly says that I really needed somebody to give me permission to not be perfect in my practice. Uh, I'm giving you every, I'm giving all of you permission. Okay, um, I taught seniors in high school. Um, so I have a lot of authority here, lots of power, right? So I am giving you permission. Thorn Mooney is telling you, you have permission to be imperfect. You have permission to sleep in sometimes, okay? Your depression is normal and it's something that lots of people struggle with, including myself. If you are neurodivergent, cool, I am too. And your witchcraft is just as valid. If your witchcraft doesn't look like other people's, that's fine. Your witchcraft is valid, okay? So this is me giving you permission from on high. Not that you needed it, you didn't need it, but I'm giving it to you. All right, we are at 28 minutes. I think we got time for just a couple. Um, Hector is asking about how receptive Gardnerian or Alexandrian leaders might be to people who are initiated in other traditions. Hector, it really depends on the group. Um, and this is true about if you're exploring particular traditions and you're worried about how acceptable you might be, here's the thing, not all covens or groups within any tradition share the same practices or beliefs. People are just people. so. Whether you're interested in exploring an ATR or Gardnerian Wicca or the Golden Dawn or whatever it is that you're interested in exploring, you're going to meet people who are going to be awesome and you're going to meet people who are going to be jerks. That's true in every group. So find your people before you necessarily get caught up in a particular tradition is my advice there. Look for people who can carry you forward. Sometimes I didn't mean to be a gardenerian. I started out in another tradition, um, and I was I was a '90s teen witch. I was eclectic. I didn't I didn't want to be told what to do, and I ended up being the high priestess in a tradition that has a reputation for being extremely rigid. It's not really okay, but it has that reputation. So sometimes you can surprise yourself, and sometimes that's how you get off a plateau too: is doing something you never thought that you would. So think of it as an adventure, approach it with beginner's mind and also a sense of play and all will be well. Thanks everybody.
Um, you can find me on YouTube if you've enjoyed these words I've said to you. Um, if you just search Thorn Mooney on YouTube, I will come right up. I've got like 11 years or so of video. You can see the many bad hairstyles I had um, through over the years. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Thorn the Witch. Thorn doesn't have an E at the end. It's just like every rose has its thorn. Um, and please pre-order my book because my cats are hungry.